F-Zero X, the Nintendo 64 installment from the F-Zero series, often gets sandwiched between the original on the Super Nintendo and GameCube's F-Zero GX and Forgotten. In case you're unfamiliar with the series, it's a futuristic high-speed racer that is based around Captain Falcon, which I'm sure you've seen in the Super Smash Bros. series. F-Zero X is often overlooked and underappreciated, but the fact is, this game kicks serious ass the very second you flick on your power switch. The overall theme is dark, rock and roll, and extremely rad. I've heard people chalk this one up as the worst of the three because it's quote, not very fun, which is a ton of bullshit. You tell me, what about this does not look fun? Literally just about every aspect of this game is fun. Every race is fast, exciting, frantic, full of crashes, tight squeezes, and action that will have you on the edge of your seat as you battle for first place out of 30 vehicles. Yes, 30 freaking vehicles in the same race. Quite the jump to have 29 named opponents as opposed to the three with its prequel on the SNES. Which are all usable characters, by the way, after you unlock them. Each of the characters have a few of their own stats too, so it's up to you to find out what vehicle feels best. The body category is how well your vehicle takes damage. The grip is how well your vehicle can handle sharp turns without sliding and losing speed. The boost is something you get after completing your first lap. Your health bar turns green and you can press B to boost at the cost of some health. This stat determines how powerful your boost is. Also, unlike the original, you can actually destroy your opponents by double tapping your shoulder buttons. Not with weapons or power ups like Mario Kart, but with your vehicle. If some fool dares to cut you off or pass on the inside, now you can finally make them pay. That ding you heard is a star you get when you knock out another racer. Every five vehicles destroyed in a single race, it gets you another life. So if a race isn't going your way, you may just want to take out some other cars so you can give it another try. It also keeps count of how many vehicles you've smashed up during the 6 race Grand Prix. That's another thing, this game has so many tracks. For comparison, Mario Kart has 16, Diddy Kong Racing has 20, F-Zero X, well let's count. Right off the bat you start with the Jack, Queen, and King Cup. If you beat all of those on expert difficulty, you unlock the Joker Cup, which has the craziest tracks yet, including a Rainbow Road clone, from Mario Kart of course, and a giant hand. If you're able to take first place in all four cups on Expert Difficulty, then you unlock Master Difficulty. This game is hard on Expert, so if you want a chance to beat all four cups on Master, you need to buckle the fuck down. What's nice is that they highlight the computer with the highest points as your rival, so that way you know who you have to beat, or even better, take him out of the race completely. If you do manage to knock out your rival, it will highlight the next computer with the highest points, so that way you know who to go for next. Once you manage to beat the four cups on Master, you unlock what is called the X Cup. It's a series of six races like the others, but amazingly, these courses are somehow randomly generated. Different turns, drops, pipes, jumps, colors, and music are varied every time. So to recap the count, you have 24 set tracks and a cup of infinitely randomized tracks. Talk about mind-blowing replay value. The generated tracks can make it that much harder to win too, since you don't have a chance to practice or memorize anything. Although some of the tracks that are generated are incredibly simple. Aside from all that there is to do in Grand Prix, you also have the other game options like multiplayer for up to four people. A game this fast is bound to be tons of fun with friends. The only problem is actually finding people that have played this game before and are any good. The only thing I wish they had would be a two player Grand Prix like they did in Mario Kart because that would have been super fun here. Or in a perfect world, a four player Grand Prix would have been amazing, but hey that's a bit too much to ask from the N64. They also have time trial mode of course like you would expect in any racing game. You can unlock course ghosts that are totally unreal and will make you feel terrible even after you've beaten everything on Master Difficulty. There's also a deathmatch mode, which is probably hit and miss with most people. You're set in a big loop with no turns along with the other 29 racers. The goal is to destroy the other vehicles in the shortest amount of time. My younger brother and I spend a decent amount of time here trying to improve our record.
Overall, it's a really fast and amazing race game that needs more appreciation. There's a huge variety of courses, not including the randomized X Cup, interesting and attractive scenery, the most rocking soundtrack I've ever heard in a game, a ton of unlockables, and huge challenges. Craziest thing is I never would have played this game if it weren't for my dad. Around 10 years ago, from what I can remember, we were waiting for a shuttle in Seattle. It was cloudy and rainy, as you might expect. He disappeared for a few minutes and came back holding a game with a torn label. He told me that the pawn shop had it for $2 since they didn't know what game it was, so hopefully it's fun for you, but if it's not, you can throw it away. After all, it was just $2. But let me tell you, that might be some of the best $2 spent in history because this game has provided many hours of top-notch entertainment. It's still a cheap game today too, so I highly recommend that you try this one if you're a fan of the racing genre or anything exciting for that matter. Well, thank you for watching, and I will see you for the next review.